Hello there. This is Cindy at cindybdesigns.com. Thank you for joining me today. This is the card that we will be making. I don't have a sample, but it's really simple. It is clean, easy to do. And I have been working with the Poinsettia Petals or Poinsettia Place Sweet Collection all week long. And I want to show you what this bundle looks like because if it's the only one you pick up out of the catalog, besides the coming home one, which has no sentiments, this is the one to get. There are so many things you can do with that. Those are my leftovers from this week that I've played with off and on. It's a very large stamp set, as you can see. And there are the dies, and they're amazing. You can dry emboss the petals and then die cut them out at the same time. And then we also have several standalone dies on top of it that you could use to go ahead and enhance your cards or whatnot. But you see the outlines for what you can emboss. It comes with this real red 3 8 inch sheer ribbon that is a dream to work with. And then we have the poinsettia plays. Well, they're the beaded pearls. And they're pretty heavy too. And they're like, you know, stamens or decor for your card, embellishments or whatnot. Then there's the Poinsettia Place Designer Series paper. You can tell I've been using mine a lot. And there are the gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous patterns. The colors in this suite are Real Red, Old Olive, Garden Green, Bumblebee, and Soft Suede. And a lot of the die cuts that you see, I couldn't line it up on this one the right way. But with most of our suites, the die cuts will go ahead and cut out bits and pieces and parts of the coordinating designer series paper. And we're going to continue going through that. But when we come to the Plush Point Setia specialty paper, you'll see where that can cut out leaves. But again, the potential of what you can do with this suite is amazing. With those little braided pearls I showed you, you can color them with alcohol markers. That is a specialty DSP that comes along with it and it's vellum. But it's, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say it is, there's like felt on top of it where it, see how the leaf fits, where it feels fuzzy and I did feature this in a blog post earlier this week, so go back through my blog. There's something there for every day using this suite. Then we have the large point study there, and that background paper I just used on a card earlier this week. So stamp pads are going to be real red and old olive. Ignore the other two. I didn't use them, along with memento tuxedo black. We have a top folding A2 card. Thick Whisper White, which is four and a quarter across by five and a half down. I do wish I used a different card base, but it still works out. Or like a different color of card base. So you're going to need scratch paper in Real Red, Blushing Bride, Old Olive, and Soft Seafoam. You want to pull in your dimensionals, your snail, along with some glue dots. And what else are we using here? Oh, we have our stitch rectangles and our stitch shape styles that we're going to be using as well. And I'm going to take that to a piece of regular Whisper White cardstock. And that is going to be put on top of our card base as our image panel. So I'm die cutting that out with the largest stitch rectangle. I'm going to flip it over pull it out just to make sure I cut through it all the way because my pads are kind of trash right now and I use that die a lot and I'm kind of sizing it up looking on top of that panel where I want to put the largest stitch circle die that I have and that's going to be more so towards the top I have maybe a quarter third of an inch up there that is centered left to right and I'm going to run that through the big shot. I was checking my sentiment there, which we'll get into detail about a little bit later on. Saturday is the day I normally clean my tools and equipment and everything like that 
and after this week, yeah, they are pretty trash. And I'm also still in a food coma from yesterday. I don't know about you guys, but ugh. So save that circle to use for another project there. And that is what our image panel is looking like so far. And I'm trying to get, you know, all the dirt off there and whatnot. So I chose that piece of designer series paper. And that measures three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Because our circle is three inches across all the way around. And that's why I made that a, a little bit bigger so I can inlay it behind the circle there and by using my tape there I'm figuring out where to put that little panel at taking my pencil making marks to give me a visual where I want it to go barely laying it down making sure it works out it does then I'm going to go ahead and press it down moving along now that sentiment I wanted to cut it apart earlier this week. I didn't. I got a little bit paranoid because of the Y going into C. But I stretched it out a little bit, figured it out, and I took it off screen and then cut it apart. This is what, as you can see there, this is what the stamp set looks like more so. And we're going to use the three large poinsettia petals there. And I'm bringing in the Stamparatus and our piece of real red cardstock. I'm laying down the largest one and the smallest one into my Stamparatus and I want to get them inked up with our real red ink and get like a nice, you know, some good coverage on there and then go ahead and just lay that down. I use, you know, my clothes a lot to rub everything down, especially in the winter time because I don't have long sleeves on in the summer. And I wanted it a little bit darker, so I inked it up. Another idea with this is to take a real red pencil, a watercolor pencil, blend it out, and that might come up in another card. I am cleaning this off right now. Our stamps, red is such a fussy color that our chamois pulls that color off like you would not believe, as you can see right there. And then I bring in our stamp cleaning pad, I have a red X on mine, so I know that on the top of it, so I know to use that for red, and that just lifts everything else up on top of it. You know, I kind of scrub it a little bit, but with clear stamps, I like to keep them as clean as I possibly can because I'm neurotic like that, and that really helps me to do so. That is Blushing Bride, and I'm taking the medium size petal there. And I'm going to just put that right in the middle of the cardstock, get everything lined up, pick it up with the door of the Stamparatus, ink it up in real red again, just for that nice contrast. And I'm getting that down. As you can see, I got a new camcorder, and I gotta tell you, making this video was so much easier. And there's obviously a big quality difference, so much better. But on the right, as you can see, that is how clean our stamps come with the chamois and using our stamp cleaning pad. So to move on, I brought in Old Olive there. It looks like Granny Apple Green, but it's really Old Olive. And I'm sizing up which leaf stamp to use. And what I just pointed to, you can also stamp that inside the middle of the poinsettias. So I chose a smaller leaf there. And I am going to lay that down twice with old olive ink on that piece of scratch paper there. But back to editing, when I'm doing that, it looks like it's going a lot faster than it really is. So next time I do a video for next week, I know I can speed it up like a, a lot more, maybe a little bit more. But you know, nothing so that it's just going to like blaze in front of your eyes. So I'm laying down the second leaf there. And... I will get that cleaned up in a second. Then we're going to bring in our soft sea foam. And once again, I will lay that down twice. I hope you guys, with old, old olive ink too, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. I did very mellow. Um, had some great food. So it worked out. And today I'm just 
definitely not going out at all because of Black Friday. And there is our second leaf. So to move along now, these are our die cuts. And you've seen me do this a million times. I'm just going to lay everything down, use my painter's tape on all the poinsettias, and then the leaves I will die cut out off screen because you've seen me do that a million times. But again, laying our new dies down, they're very close to the edge. And you can see the edges within the lines, and you definitely want to get that straightened up all the way around. And that's why I use the painter's tape a lot. And that is how you can inlay those dies to the veins of the leaves. Well, dry emboss into that automatically to give it more texture. And now I kind of wish I would have done that, but you know, as an afterthought while I'm doing this voiceover, adjusting that large leaf there, put another piece of painter's tape down, and then I'm going to send that through our stamp and cut and emboss machine. So as I'm doing all this die cutting, if you are a shut in this year or whatnot, please send me an email, cindy at cindybdesigns.com, and I would love to send you a Christmas card just so that you get some. And those are our die cuts. That is what we're looking like. And you can see how expertly close and how easy it is to put all that together and then have your die cuts turn out right, like no extra edging on there or too much. So bring them back in our card and the Stamparatus, which you know I always use to help me line everything up. And I'm really trying to stay in frame here a little bit because I'm still trying to get used to this camera a little bit. Laying down the image panel there, again using that purple tape, and kind of figuring out exactly where I need to place the sentiment a little bit you know, eyeballing it, but in the meantime, I'm going to use glue dots to put together our poinsettia. They are very strong, they're sturdy, they're tough. It's going to hold your paper together no matter what, as well as your embellishments. So Real Red, Blushing Bride, and then Real Red on top, and that is going to be our flower. And I'm pulling our tape off right now, getting everything lined up again, making sure it's going to work out. And it's, it, this is so odd. My other camera is like almost 15 years old and this one's new and I have it on, it's sped up double time and it just seems like it's really, really slow. So next time, you know, I'll go three, which you'll see later on in this video. And maybe it'll look the same. I mean, I don't know. So I'm putting down the leaves a little bit, kind of winging where I want to place them, how far down they're going to come, and where I'm going to put my sentiment. So I want to get that down on the image panel. And again, do not be afraid to cut your stamps. They will line back up perfectly. I'm laying the Mary down with Memento Tuxedo Black. Was really happy with that first impression. Cleaning that stamp off, and then I'm going to go ahead and size up the Christmas part of it. And once again, ink that up in Memento Tuxedo Black. It was crooked. It kind of fell off when I was looking or trying to adjust it. Got to fix it again and then pick it up with the lid of my Stamparatus. Now when I do that, there's a soft side and a smooth side to your Stamparatus lid. I have the, the um, well, soft and smooth, same thing. There's like a rougher side where you can feel the lines. I have that facing towards the inside to hold on to my stamps. This is where I have it sped up to three, because I just checked, and yeah, it goes by a lot quicker and much easier. So I'm adding stamp dimensionals on the back of our image panel there, panel there, staggering them 
and I'm like, kind of like pushing that quarter inch there up the top so I wanted to lay that down by hand rather than pokey tool and then over again on that side but you want to push your sentiment down first because if you have dimensionals on your image panel it is not going to work there so I'm pulling the backings off of our stamp and dimensionals and then I'm going to go ahead and lay that on top making sure that everything is lined up top to bottom left to right especially with that inlay panel I have a, the inlay DSP I have in there and I did the same sketch a couple weeks ago but made a shaker card and I realized that once I started doing this and I was like okay you know I'm gonna have to do it anyway so I put one stamp and dimensional on the back there have to add the leaves there pick which side that you want up of the leaves I'm taking a glue dot putting it on the stamped side of it sneaking it underneath the poinsettia there and then just giving it a quick press for it to adhere so I hope you join me from here on out until around the 20th of December or so I'm gonna have you know 12 days of Christmas different sweets giveaways prizes um, you know my own couple Black Friday personal sales for you to take advantage of and here I am pulling off that leaf because I didn't like the way it went but you can the glue dots you can change them and adjust them and again it always works out so I'm looking pretty good there like how that is I'm going to flip it over and use Stampin' Dimensionals to help secure the leaves down a little bit more to the poinsettia in several different spots but I do want to keep it within that three inch circle there so I don't have a dimensional on top and I gotta go right now because I have a cousin calling me I'm so sorry I'll be right back oh where was I okay I'm pulling off the backings of the stamp and dimensionals. I'm going to get our poinsettia centered in our window card the way that I wanted to. And I'm so sorry I'm out of frame. I wasn't looking up at the viewfinder. And I'm going to go ahead and get that laid down. And that is it. We are looking good. Or actually, it's not it. I'm going to pull another glue dot there and stick that right in the middle of the poinsettia and I swear I do pull this down eventually like the entire stamparatus so you can actually see what I'm doing and I'm going to put on one of our little braided pearls there and remember again you can color them the pearl part with our alcohol markers our stamp and blends and now that I laid that down I do wish I'd used our one of our silver foil sheets is my card base because they're the back side is white and that would have really gone great with the silver trim around the braided pearl so that is our card thank you so much for joining me today don't forget to visit me next week please leave a comment on this video and hit like and subscribe and i will see you again on monday for more projects